The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and thank you for joining today's webinar. Today we'll be, we will be presenting an Office 365 Masterclass. My name is Michael Holden from Byte Security Partnerships. I'm pleased today to be joined by Mohammed Abdullah. Abdullahi, Senior Systems Engineer at Veronis, who will be taking you through the bulk of today's presentation. Sorry, I just noticed this. Uh, the agenda for the webinar. Firstly, a short overview of Bytes. Then we will go through some of the discussion points for the session. We will then move into the bulk of the presentation from Mohammed, which will be followed by a Q&A session. But first, some housekeeping. Attendee lines will be on mute throughout the session. There will be a Q&A at, at the end of the session, so please post any questions in the questions window and I will field them during this Q&A. This is a purely strategic discussion. Any commercials can be discussed with your Bytes account manager after the session. Everyone will receive the recording after the session. And lastly, we have a feedback survey at the end of the session and would appreciate it if you could take two minutes to complete it as we use these to make sure that our webinars are still hitting the mark. So, who are Bytes? Bytes Security Partnerships is the specialist security partner of the Bytes Group in the UK. Bytes aim to marry up the agility, insight, and personal approach from the smallest specialist partner with the scale and scope that comes with being part of a much larger group. We are proud here at Bytes of the technical expertise we have around the, any, around the solutions we deploy, and that allows us to op enjoy top-tier vendor partnerships which allows us to deliver for our customers on both technical and commercial sides. We work across the full spectrum of information security from perimeter and next-gen firewall through to cloud and mobile security, data security and access and authentication, offering both hardware and software solutions. What we offer and add value to business and vendor partner solutions is the technical suite of services that we are able to deploy whether that's looking at security strategy, deployment, um, technology mapping, project scoping, planning and delivery, or 24 seven direct to engineer support. There are, are a wide variety of ways in which we can act as an extension of your IT teams to make sure that the solutions you deploy add value quickly. But that's enough about us. Let's talk about Office 365. Today's discussion will share how to quickly identify and protect sensitive data, implement least privilege in Office 365, and gain visibility and control required by regulation. As mentioned, we are joined by Mohammed Abdullahi from Veronis. Veronis is a best of breed security vendor and a global market leader in data access and governance, trusted by over 6,000 customers across 150 countries. As a Bytes Gold partner, we thought that Veronis would be ex excellent subject matter experts to deliver today's content. And over to you, Mohammed. Thanks very much, Michael. Can I just confirm, Michael, that you can see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, brilliant, lovely. Thank you very much. So, <clears throat> excuse me, first of all, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for your time and for joining us this morning. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Before I get going, I'd just like to take an opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Mohammed. I'm one of the senior engineers in the UK team. Um, I've been with the company for coming up to five and a half years now, and in that time, it's been, it's been a very privileged time for me personally. I've had a, a great opportunity to work with so many different organizations of different sizes and industries and sectors with different drivers and regulation and, and, and the like, uh, but all with very, very common and similar data challenges. And that's allowed me to accrue a lot of uh, best practice, and, and it's generally something that I like to share um, during sessions like this. Okay, uh, What I'll endeavor to do is I'll go through uh, a little bit about Veronis and who we are and what we do and how we do it and how that's come to be, and then do the same with, uh, with Microsoft 365 and just explain a little bit about what that actually is and all of the different components um, that you get within Microsoft 365 and then importantly, uh, go through how the two are linked together, highlighting the different questions that each technology poses, and importantly, why they work together so well, right? And I'll, I'll endeavor to, to perhaps give a couple of real life examples as well from, from my personal customer base. Uh, as I'm going through, if you do get any questions, perhaps you thought, 
um, something that I went through was particularly unclear or you wanted me to offer up a bit more detail, please make a note of the question and we can come to that in the Q&A piece at the end of the session. So, Veronis. Uh, as as uh, Michael just mentioned, we've been around for coming up to 15 years now with close to 7,000 customers globally. Uh, and we offer a, a data security centric platform that's been built from the ground up, right? It's not uh, developed uh, via acquisitions or anything like that. It's been organic growth. And what that has enabled us to do is uh, offer a, a very, very seamless experience for organizations that have unstructured and semi-structured data. Um, and that's across a number of different platforms, right? We're able to offer visibility across Windows and other SIS stores, uh, think like a NAS or a SAN, perhaps a NetApp or, a, or an EMC device, um, Office 365, and that would translate as um, Exchange and SharePoint Online, OneDrive for Business, Microsoft Teams, um, Azure Active Directory, um, Active Directory on-premise, various kernels and builds of Unix and Linux, Exchange and SharePoint on-prem, and also other um, online platforms like Box. And across those repositories, um, not only are we offering a simultaneous uh, view into each of those platforms, we're able to work with organizations to help them answer core fundamental questions around the data that lives there, right? So things like, is my data at risk? Where is the sensitive content stored? Do you know who has access to it? Who is accessing it? Who's doing what with that content? Is there any risk associated? Do you need to take action against that data set? Can you detect a data breach, right? Um, if there's threats to your data set, whether it's internally or externally, whether there's accounts that have been compromised or otherwise, would you get that visibility in a manner that would enable you to actively investigate the, um, the, the breach uh, using actionable information, right? And then finally, are you compliant? Uh, where is your regulated data, whether it's financial, personal, um, business critical, whether it's IP, do you know who is accessing it, where it lives, why people are touching it, if it should be in those locations, and can you evidence compliance against it, right? And each of those, those core um, fundamentals that we offer translate into the three core components that a lot of our uh, customers use Veronis for. Data protection, compliance, and threat detection and response, all against the one platform. And that's extremely important. So how does that translate together? Right? How, does that, how does that come together as, as one data security platform? So the first thing is, we'll start from the left here and go to the right. So the left, you can see all of the platforms that are highlighted earlier, whereby Veronis is able to simultaneously monitor the data that lives there um, in, able to, in order to be able to offer you the actionable intelligence that you need to make informed decisions. And across those repositories, we're pulling a number of different streams of information. We're resolving your Active Directory to pull all of the users and groups, getting a clear understanding of not only how those um, users and, and groups have access to data, but the relationship that they have with each other. We then map the directory tree for each of those platforms, right? Getting a clear understanding of the access control that exists and marrying the two together to give you that unique insight into perhaps excessive levels of risk within the environment. We then non-natively audit the activity that occurs within those platforms. So you're able to get that context of not only where access exists, but how users utilize those levels of access and the activity that they commit within the environment. We then provide you the additional context of where the sensitivity of your content lives in order for you to get clear understanding of, of how um, users are interfacing with content and, and where the, the, the most sensitive content lives in order to help you prioritize your efforts. And then finally now we also scale to ingest Active Directory and Perimeter Telemetry. So first of all, ingesting um, information from Active Directory, which inherently is an insecure platform by design, right? It's not designed uh, with security in mind and helping you get key risk indicators uh, around Active Directory to help you harden um, that very, very core component within any environment. And then also uh, perimeter telemetry. So ingesting information from VPN concentrators, web proxies, DNS servers, in order to help you get the end-to-end -end visibility across the threat landscape. So whether something occurs externally and intrudes into your environment, or the complete opposite, whereby um, perhaps you've got a rogue insider and they start internally misbehave, um, abnormally access data, and then try and exfiltrate that data out via a shadow IP site as an example. And then, as, as I mentioned earlier, 
that then translates to the three core components, the three core use cases that organizations invest in lawyers for. So helping to protect their data, um, offer threat detection and response, and both of those really come together with the compliance angle. So that's for owners, right? That's what we do and how we do it. Now, moving on to Microsoft 365, right? What is it? What licenses do you guys own or perhaps are looking at? Um, why did you invest in that? And what are you actually using? One thing that we've seen in experience is just due to the nature of the beast, it's a very, very, very broad platform. Um, and there's a lot of, I want to use the word replication, but just in terms of the fact that there's so many different screens that you can use to do the same thing, right? And it's very, very easy to get lost inside that. So Microsoft 365 breaks down into three core elements, right? It's a complete intelligent um, solution. It's designed to help empower employees. Uh, the Microsoft 365 powered device underpins this, right? So the, the, the aim is with this solution, employees are going to be able to be more creative. They're gonna be empowered to work together. They're gonna to be able to do it in a way that's much simpler for them um, in order to, for them to be able to get their work done through an integrated user experience. And then importantly, to enable IT to be able to actually manage that environment. And there is an intelligent security behind all of that to make their lives easier in terms of how they protect their environment from modern threats. So the three core components that I was touching on are, first of all, you've got Office 365. So that's what I highlighted earlier, which um, amongst other things, uh, you have Exchange and SharePoint Online, OneDrive for Business, Azure Active Directory, Microsoft Teams. Uh, you've got Windows 10, and then also you've got the EMS, so Enterprise Mobility and Security, right? Now, one thing that I just touched on was what do you actually use, right? This is a very, very broad platform. I'm not sure if anyone's taken a look at this in a great level of detail, but let's, let's break that down. So first of all, Office 365, right? You can get two different license types. You've got E3 and then E5. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is pretty much a theme as we'll go on here, is anything security or analytics related is covered by E5, right? And it's very important there to understand exactly what you have and then from there, what you're using, right? A lot of organizations, um, and, and this will be something that I'll touch on as we go on in this session, um, we'll, we'll look at this as a, is it a Veronis or Microsoft 365? It's one or the other. But fundamentally, we're answering different questions, right? The, the challenges that organizations face with respect to their data and why they invest in Veronis in the first place exist within Office 365. Right, So it's not a case of um, just because you have your data there, you're not going to face those same challenges. It's about understanding how these two technologies can complement each other in order for you to be able to attain maximum value. Right. So on the E3 side, um, mainly you're, you're using the applications and services. Anything security and, and analytics based then comes in with the, um, the Office 365 E5 license. Moving on to EMS, you'll see it's, it's um, it's the same. So um, on, on the E3 side, you, you get your Active Directory, adva um, Advanced Threat Analytics, or ATA, um, and you also get the Information Protection Premium, so the ability to um, encrypt your data, right? Um, with E5 now, you're then able to extend your Active Directory. You can utilize Cloud App Security in order to be able to help you um, bring enterprise grade visibility and the control and the security around that in order to be able to detect and protect against um, modern threats. And then also the ability to be able to um, implement intelligent classification and encryption for files. And, and that then obviously then um, moves on into the wider DLP conversation, which we're not gonna talk about today. And then finally, uh, we've got Windows 10, right? So the Windows 10, it's pretty much, again, the, the same theme of what I've been talking about here. Um, anything the, that is security focused, so the advanced threat protection in this instance, that's covered by, by E5. And, and what is um, the, the ATP? So that's, that's um, Windows Defender ATP, and it brings you um, endpoint APT protection built into Windows. It's behavioral based, it's cloud powered, it's advanced attack detection. It offers a rich timeline of, of forensic investigation and, and mitigation. So it's, it's, it's great, right? But it's, it's really important to understand where that information is coming from, how you can then utilize that against your wider environment and how that would 
that would complement existing security tools. So how do you prepare for the cloud, right? How do you, for those that are perhaps in the stages of um, early transition or are planning that transition, <laughs> excuse me, how do you get ready for um, moving to the cloud, right? So first and foremost, Veronis and Microsoft are, are partners, right? So we're not we're not um, competing in that space, right? Microsoft are a, um, a premium partner for Veronis, and a lot of what is developed now is developed in conjunction with respect to what we're doing within Office 365. So I've touched on this, but just to uh, reiterate the key insights into the unstructured data um, that Veronis uh, provides, right? So first of all, we're able to help you understand your entire unstructured data estate, getting a clear map um, and visibility of the access control that exists, where your, um, where your sensitive content lives, the risks associated with that. So perhaps data that's exposed um, to the wrong individuals or data that you shouldn't actually hold in the first place, perhaps is stale or otherwise, and, and helping you to get that information, that insight, that visibility, so that you're able to take action against that prior to moving it up to the cloud. The last thing that anyone wants to do is pretty much replicate the, the challenge or the problem that they have on premise and face the same challenges online, right? Um, we're then able to help you utilize that information to help you prioritize your efforts. So defining the proper site permissions um, that should exist for SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams from the get-go. So you're not in a position where you're then chasing your tail um, in order to be able to get that information uh, or take that um, to, uh, take measures in order to combat that. Uh, we can help you define the acceptable sharing policies for SharePoint Online and OneDrive. So one of the biggest challenges that we always see in pretty much every environment that we run risk assessments against on premise is the risk of global access. So data that's accessible to everyone within the business, right? Now within Office 365, that's taken a step further because not only can you share data internally with everyone, but you can also do the same thing externally. So perhaps people that aren't even in the organization would then get access to internal sensitive content, right? And it's really, really important to not only have that map of visibility into the access and where the sensitive content lives, but as soon as uh, content is shared externally, have that information so you're able to take action um, straight away. A lot of organizations always, um, will say to me um, initially that they're planning to go fully into Office 365 and then eventually they, they kind of accept a, a hybrid model just because um, in the majority of cases that we've seen while they would love to be fully in Office 365 uh, there is an, a, a component or an element of data that just needs to remain on premise it can't be um, in the cloud and available there identifying and archiving stale content as I mentioned uh, you guys don't want to be in a position where you're you're taking data that isn't even in use at the moment and then storing it in Office 365 and essentially replicating the risk and the challenge that, that you're facing today. And then finally, implement the effective classification that we already have on-premise uh, via the predefined global rules that come as standard out of the box um, that all of our or the majority of our customers are leveraging now and just scaling that out into Office 365. Now what this gives you when you're, especially for those of our customers that monitor both on-premise and online data repositories, is they get that one simultaneous view of the access, the activity, where sensitive content lives, mapping behavior, uh, getting a clear understanding of how individuals typically access data, both on-premise and online simultaneously, enabling them to map processes, enforce those processes, uh, detect um, untoward instances, and be able to uh, investigate those forensically across those repositories all within one platform. So one of the things that I just touched on was the, the classification piece, right? And this is something that Veronis and, and Microsoft work really, really well together to help organizations get the best of both worlds, get the best of um, being able to tag files within Office 365 uh, and then utilize the Veronis classification engine to, um, to tie that together. So the, what we're doing here is we're filling the gap um, when classification tags perhaps aren't applied at all or they're not applied correctly 
um, by users or individuals and and potentially compromising uh, a follow-on security protocol, right? So think um, if there's a file containing personal information, it should be marked as confidential, but for whatever reason, an individual has marked it as internal, as an example, right? Um, and and what we're doing is we're enabling the the automated discovery of that sensitive data via those predefined rules that I just mentioned um, that come as standard out of the box, identifying various um, bits of personal information and financial information, and then helping um, organizations to map that together. So if um, a file has been mislabeled or not labeled at all, um, whether it was maliciously or otherwise, enabling an organization to not only get that visibility via uh, predefined reports, but then actively take action against that so that you're not in a position whereby you're then having to figure out, well, what happened to this content? Did it then leak? Um, and so on and so forth. Now, a core component of that, and this is a, a recurring theme, of course, is identifying who should have that access in the first place to those locations, being able to remediate that access. And, and importantly then, in the event whereby individuals that didn't require that access had access, being able to forensically investigate exactly what it was that they did um, in order to be able to prove that no data, no data leaked. So it's a very, very simplified uh, view, right, using Veronis across SharePoint Online, OneDrive, Teams, Exchange Online, enabling you to implement that privacy by design, right, or release privilege model, but then replicating that across your on-premise stores as well. And sharing all of the detection, reporting, alerting, um, the controls that you need for that sensitive content um, in case of data being shared internally or externally. Now, what does that actually look like, right? How do the two work together, right? So this is a, a screenshot of the, the labels or tags, the policies that you would set up um, within uh, AIP as your information protection in order to, to enable users to label files, right? And you would set that to say, okay, well, um, our internal policy is public information doesn't have any sensitivity to it, so you mark it as public. Confidential is PCI, highly confidential is PII, right? Just as an example, right? Um, so users would go ahead and, and mark that. Now, when, when you're creating each of those um, each of those labels, they each come with a label ID, and that's what is, is, is tagged in the, the metadata of the file in order to enable um, that follow-on security protocol. So how do the two work together? So on one side, you've got Azure Information Protection. On the other, you've got Veronis. So you've defined the, the, the policies and the labels uh, within AIP. Uh, you've got your personal, public, general, confidential, highly confidential. And in, in each of those, you're, you're setting how um, users should tag uh, or label any file. So for example, if they're just replying to an email, is it in, in what scenario do, does um, a label need to be applied? Right? Now within Veronis, we create, or we have our predefined rules that come a standard out of the box. And then we also have the ability to create custom rules using a variety of things like regular expressions, patterns, dictionary terms, to scan for and identify anything that as an organization, you would deem to be sensitive or, or critical in nature. And, and we extend that now to create rules to be able to um, identify where these labels exist, right? So we would create a, a label within um, Veronis to replicate what uh, you've got within AIP. So in this instance, I'm gonna use um, highly confidential. And then where it all connects is that label ID that I highlighted earlier, right? So we take that label ID in that, that label within AIP and place it into our classification um, label within Veronis, right? And what that then means is we're able to report on where each of these labels have been applied, first and foremost, right? We can then provide you additional visibility of um, where labels have been misapplied. So because we're marrying up the two classification technologies there, we're showing you, okay, well, highly confidential is when personal information should 
if, if there's a personal information in the file, it should be labeled as highly confidential. You've got 10 files, eight of them have been marked correctly, but two of them have been marked. One is internal, one doesn't have a label at all, right? So that's step two, you're reporting on that. And then the final step is actively taking measures to reapply those labels correctly to ensure that uh, that, that follow-on security component uh, isn't compromised, right? And, and we can see uh, a screen here to, to show you how easy it is for users to actively be able to, to label their files. And the purpose of this is, is to show that user having access to AIP from the business bar within Office 365, right? So we're doing, when I say we, Veronis is doing all of the heavy lifting behind the scene, but the user gets a native experience. Um, meanwhile, it's obviously showing the integration within Azure RMS that these labels can provide as well. So just to recap then, the security between uh, Microsoft and the Veronis classification. So as I highlighted in the beginning, we're partnering together on classification and labeling alongside AIP. Uh, Veronis can provide a complete solution to discover and tag data automatically. So again, our classification engine um, will be able to Oh, went the wrong way. Our classification engine uses the predefined rules that come as standard out of the box, mapping personal or financial information, or perhaps in the event that you've created custom rules showing where business critical sensitive content lives. And then also you've got your AIP setup where users are labeling files and then you're marrying the two together to make sure that labels are being correctly applied and they're not compromising uh, any follow on uh, security control. Um, and then importantly, being able to take action against um, against data that has been mislabeled, so that in the event of um, a potential breach, you're you're confident in the fact that that data is not being leaked out of the environment, right? And then obviously you can utilize um, the security controls that you get from both platforms in order to help you investigate exactly what's happened forensically and show um, a chain of events effectively. Now, for all of the above to actively be effective, right? accurate classification is the key. The last thing that anyone wants is to just depend on users, right? because just we all know it, due to human error, um, there's bound to be uh, a genuine mistake occur at some point whereby a file has been mislabeled and you're unable to then put in place the appropriate security controls around that. But and then at the same time, you don't want to um, not have your, your wider security components in place uh, by not enabling users to, to audit, uh, to excuse me, to label that in the first place. So this enables you to get that, that great um, best of both worlds. Now, if there's any hybrid considerations, right? So, one thing I touched on is we now have a lot of organizations utilizing both Veronis, uh, excuse me, utilizing Veronis to, to monitor platforms that are both on-premise and online. So some considerations, right, for you guys to, to take into effect. Um, perhaps you may be considering moving to the cloud, you may be some way there, you may be fully there, but it's important to, to, to take into account why it's important to get the same level of visibility across on-premise and online, right? So the first thing is uh, the access control, right? Making sure that individuals have the same levels of access on-premise and online, and that access isn't um, modified in any way, right? So what I mean when I say that is if individuals have a certain level of access online, you don't want to make sure that that access is increased or excessive online, and, and potentially then they get access to data that they shouldn't have. And from that, it's extremely important that you guys understand the type of data that you store online, whether it's sensitive, whether it's personal, whether it's financial, whether it should be there in the first place, whether it's going against um, some kind of compliance or regulation for it being stored online and outside of your environment, and where that data is concentrated within the environment. How much content do you have that's actually in use, right? How much use, uh, data are users actually making use of? If you have for argument's sake, 10 terabytes on-premise spread across a couple of file servers, but only 30, 40, 50% of that is actively used over a period of time, does it make sense to move the full 10 terabytes um, online and then replicate that, that, that issue that, that, and that challenge and the risk that you have on-premise? 
and, and importantly, how users utilize the levels of access that they have, right? What do they, what, does, what activity do they commit? How do they behave? How is that mapped, right? Across the different repositories simultaneously, right? So getting that clear understanding. And then finally, are you able to actually safely remediate excessive levels of access? So the need for a hybrid view, right? So remember the, the, um, the bits that I've just gone through, right? So an organization strategy for a cloud adoption needs to consider the existing environment, so what you have as of right now, because in our experience, there's always a need to keep some data or some service on-premise. Very rarely do we come across an organization that is fully within um, Office 365. And therefore, excuse me, there we go. Therefore, security needs to be able to extend seamlessly across both in order to be able to provide an aggregated view, right? A single pane of glass that individuals can rely on to give them the same level of visibility across all of the different repositories on premise and online, right? And, and the way in which we're able to assist with that is providing an effective level of visibility bi-directionally across all of those repositories to identify data that's exposed, data that's sensitive, data that's stale, uh, and then remediate those risks importantly as well provide a unified auditing and threat detection view, right, with comprehensive security dashboards in order to help organizations take action against potential incidents utilizing a low number of very, very high fidelity alerts, right? Providing classification that's not only out of the box, but also accurate in order to be able to identify data that is sensitive, whether it be personal, financial, or otherwise, perhaps data that needs to stay on premise and doesn't or shouldn't be moved online, and provide that unified view and that unified ability to perform the same level of classification across on premise and online. So, one thing that I'd like to spend a little bit of um, time talking about is, is Microsoft Teams. I'm not sure how many are familiar with this or how many have it running internally in their environment. Um, but Microsoft Teams is, um, it's a great collaboration tool that Microsoft have implemented, enabling individuals to be able to work together seamlessly. Um, and they actually estimate that it has now more than 13 million monthly active users. And it's outplayed Slack in terms of usage, despite being in the market for pretty much less than two years, right? So it's, what, what it does is it offers collaboration on any device, access to data, whether it's internal or external. Um, and most importantly there, it's self-service creations of team sites, enabling users to decide when, how, with who, um, and where that they collaborate with individuals. Now, of course, that offers a level of risk because that enables users to take into their own hands the ability to, to share data internally, externally, go against perhaps defined security controls. Um, implementing their own access control structures uh, with, a, with a flat access control list. Uh, and it's extremely important to have that level of visibility when those sites are perhaps either being created or utilized um, and the type of content that lives within there. So we can help ensure that that data is um, secure, is actively managed by first of all uh, classifying that content that lives within there uh, and making sure that either sensitive content isn't leaking into those spaces, but if there's a defined reason that that data should be there, um, ensuring that it's accurately controlled or secured in the same way as, as on-premise, um, enable effective understanding, uh, monitoring, um, and organization of that team's environment. So essentially ensuring that you're able to maintain control, and then minimizing any um, impact of, of the scale of your SharePoint site um, just exploding effectively and then enabling effective permissions to be maintained on top of that, right? And then finally, from a security perspective, enabling the effective um, alerting to the activity that's occurring within uh, those team sites, complementing um, the cloud app security that you'd get within E5 and enabling forensic controls um, or the ability to forensically investigate exactly what's happening um, within Office 365, and importantly, how that then translates across the wider um, ecosystem. So 
how do we how do we do that right how do we go by go about the the security and alerting piece focusing not only on premise but but online as well and, and how that extends so for on this first and foremost we've always taken an inside out approach with regards to data protection right so starting with the data getting a clear understanding of the type of content you have the sensitivity of the content you have where it lives who has access to it who is accessing it using that information to monitor the data for abuse ensuring that only the relevant people have access implementing a model of least privilege enabling the business to be able to regularly recertify those levels of access so they're able to ensure that least privilege model is maintained and then from there efficiently sustaining that that secure state right so how does that then transcend to um or translate to that collaboration between microsoft and and, and Veronis? so we're in a position to support ata and atp deployments within Active Directory and Azure Active Directory by providing the ad additional context, right? All around the user, devices, store, data sensitivity of the individuals actually accessing that data. We can then extend that by monitoring perimeter telemetry, like I mentioned earlier, around VPN concentrators, web proxies, DNS servers, uh, utilizing Veronis Edge and helping you to get that full visibility of, um, of your threat landscape. So if there's, um, an account being compromised externally uh, via VPN and then an intruder intrudes into your environment and therefore has access to the data stored within on-prem and online and then trying to exfiltrate that data out via, via shadow IT, for example. Using all of the activity that we collect to, to baseline activity, right? Getting a clear understanding of how accounts typically behave on a day-to-day -day basis, peacetime profiles, as we call them, to get a clear understanding of any deviation that may occur. So that as and when that happens, we're in a position to provide you a low number of high fidelity alerts, something that you can actually do something with, right? Um, something that you can take action against, something that's clear, right? Um, and then track and act action all of these alerts from a single dashboard, uh, whether it's um, in the Veronis web interface or also then extending into your wider security ecosystem and utilizing your, your theme product as well. All of that then helps you to be able to answer pretty much the core fundamental question, right, that anyone should be concerned with, with respect to their data, right? Is our data safe? So Veronis and Microsoft 365, right? So I've spoken a lot about what Veronis does, what Microsoft 365 does, how it works together. Um, so Fundamentally, we're answering different questions, right? We're playing in a different space, um, but they work very, very well together. Um, and it's pretty much better together, right? So it's a wrong conversation to try and compare one to the other or to select one over the other. If anything, you want to reduce reliance on a single company for productivity and security. So Microsoft platforms offer tools which provide a level of functionality with the expectation that Partners will enter the market to provide additional capabilities. And as I mentioned, Microsoft and, and Veronis aren't answering the same question. And, and the overlap is, it exists, but it's slight. Really only around the uh, security of Active Directory and Azure Active Directory. Um, Veronis provides a platform that allows organizations to, to safely exploit the capabilities that Office 365 provides and then leverage the full power of the platform, excuse me. So together, they're, they're, they're very complementary and they provide the best level of security to your organization, whether you're at the beginning of your journey, still contemplating your journey, whether you're already within Office 365 and enabling you to be able to put in place those controls. So thank you very, very much for your time and listening to me for the last half an hour. Um, I'd like to open up the floor for any questions that, that may be in the audience. Thanks, Mohamed. Um, so we haven't got any questions at this point in time. If anybody would like to um, post them, then now's the time. Um, thank you very much for presenting to us. I'm sure many people found it very insightful and very useful. Um, See if there's any questions coming through. Sure.
just while we're waiting, just want to say to everybody on the line, thank you very much for ta for taking the time to attend. I know it's a, uh, quite a, a task to find an hour in your day to, to sit and listen to a webinar. So we do really appreciate having you uh, having you on the lines with us today. And it seems like there aren't going to be any questions. I think, um, Robert, your your uh, presentation was very comprehensive. So thank you very much. And thank you to everybody for joining once again. Bye.